President Mohamed Buhari vows not to restructure Nigeria. An international press center says amendment of media bills is an attempt by the government to criminalize journalism in the country. This is Plus Politics and I am Justin Akadonia. President Mohamed Buhari has vowed that his administration will not restructure the country. He wants that those agitating for separation and campaigning for restructuring are naive and ignorant of war. And speaking on the ban on opium grazing, the Southeast Chairman of Miyeti Al Lakatul Brothers Association of Nigeria, Makban, Gidado Sidiki, has said the ban on open grazing by the governors of southern Nigeria will remain ineffective until an alternative to open grazing is provided for the herders. Uh, this is a social political regional organization such as Afeniferi Pandef and the Christian Association of Nigeria Can arose against the federal government's insistence on recovering a grazing route for herders in the country. Now joining us to discuss this is Ken Robinson, the National Public Secretary of Pandef and architect Idris Bawa, Assistant National Secretary General of the Mieti Allah Cattle British Association of Nigeria, Makban. Many thanks for joining me, uh, gentlemen. Thank, thank you for this opportunity one more time. All right, uh, let's just get straight to uh, the business of restructuring. Uh, the president uh, has been in the news uh, since the weekend over this issue of restructuring, saying those who are actually calling for restructuring uh, do not understand what exactly they are asking for, and they are just uh, naive. I'll start with you, Ken Robinson. When you heard that, how did that uh, really hit you? It's, it's uh, very disappointing to hear the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria speak in that manner. And uh, this is the president of a political, I mean, the president of a country and supposed leader of uh, the All Progressive con uh, Congress, the ruling party, that uh, two years ago constituted a, a, a committee to look at restructuring. That committee, as we all know, was headed by the governor of Sokoto, I mean, uh, Kaduna State, Malam Nasri Erufai. And the committee submitted the reports with some very um, acceptable recommendations. And uh, the president, being the leader of the political party that did that uh, in the interest of Nigeria, we are surprised that he will come to say that those uh, asking for restructuring are naive. Uh, it, this clearly shows that. This, this, this presidency is dishonest, that this presidency is, is incoherent, and the APC uh, ruling political party is a confused group of people. And, and we say this with all sense of responsibility. Uh, we, we know that the statement of Mr. President was made by a representative at an event in uh, Zaria, Kaduna State. Yes, it is even more disturbing that the president will send someone to Kaduna State uh, at the launch of a peace foundation I will go to make those kind of statements. Uh, we didn't hear him talk about how to address and deal with the bandits that have made kidnapping a, a sport and, and, and uh, making it an enterprise. And every day we hear of uh, school children being kidnapped and people being harassed and livelihoods being destroyed. But this is the president that will go to that kind of environment and talk about uh, threatening war and the destruction of uh, Nigerians who are doing legitimate businesses in various parts of the country. It is disappointing, it is unacceptable, and it is least expected of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we highly condemn that statement. We ask Mr. President to apologize to patriotic Nigerians who are providing solutions to the problems of the country instead of uh, 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 making very uncomplimentary statements against well-meaning Nigerians. All right, uh, let me come to you right now, architect um, Idris Abawa. Specifically, the President said that those who are asking for uh, restructuring uh, do not even understand uh, what they are requesting for. In your opinion, let me get uh, straight to it now. What does restructuring mean to you and what is your stand concerning this issue of restructuring of Nigeria? Thank you very much and uh, good evening everybody, good evening listeners. It is my pleasure uh, having me on your program this evening. First of all, I will want, uh, you see, I'm not a spokesperson of the government. However, 
I will want people that uh, really talk about restructuring, either to structure or not restructuring. What do you understand by the structure of the country? Now, we talk about the autonomy of local government. Some people will come out openly to deny the local government autonomy and to deny the state house of assembly's autonomy and to deny the judiciary's autonomy. Yet you come out to talk of the structuring. If you are talking of structure, fine. In what aspect do we restructure Nigeria? We have the National Assembly members which we elected and they represent each and every constituency in this country. And I believe they are competent enough to represent our own interests, to, to discuss it at the, their own level, and to make proper recommendations to government for education. If we continue not to drag and overdrive these issues, when you look at the problems you are facing as a nation now, I don't think we are really helping ourselves. I don't think we are helping the country. Uh, people need to really come out and be very straightforward and look at really what we want. What do we, uh, let, let's identify this problem. Let's see how we can solve this problem. Now, part of this, we are in democracy. We elected our members, we elected our members come and represent us at that level. Now, why don't we allow them to discuss those issues and make proper recommendations and then we, 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 we look at how, as a nation, we can make something good of it. So that we now save our country from all these arguments, from all feelings, you know, all, all, all this rubbish happening all over the country. I think we are really getting tired of all these problems. And all it's right. time for architect, all of us architect to, come to see how we can agree and, you know, how we can put ahead. We cannot continue to drag this country backwards. Okay, speaking time, of moving the country um, forward, Architect Bauer, if I can get a word in edgewise right now. Speaking about taking the country forward, specifically, you said we should come to a roundtable and uh, sort this issue once and for all. But in your opinion, I really want to be uh, you know, distinct right now. In your opinion, are you saying restructuring is not what we need at this particular time? The, the, the third one, I earlier, you see, people just come out of the air, come out of the media and talk about the structure. And you see, what are we going to restructure? For example, yes, if, if the structure is it gives the local government autonomy, I believe when, once we give the local government autonomy to be able to control the issue of insecurity we are having in this country at a very serious level because that is the government at the grassroots. The local government will be able to bring the discipline, the community leadership at their own level. Possibly, the local vigilantes at that level. Able, so if, if that's the kind of history. But you see, when you talk of history in general, possibly there are issues that you will want us to see as, uh, as a nation. It is called that I have a bad feeling about that. All right. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you so much, um, um, Architect Mbawa. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Ken Robinson again into this uh, particular discourse. Uh, uh, the architect uh, seemed to have um, uh, the issue of uh, concentrating power you know, to various levels, and so government can be closer to the people. That is his uh, main uh, stay on this particular issue. But then again, one of the points um, the president raised, I just want us to see if we can analyze it um, a bit. He said that those convincing for restructuring are naive and ignorant of war. If I have to put it uh, differently, can we infer that the president uh, is saying that uh, if we restructure, that we might be heading for some sort of war in the country? Um, let me let me uh, say that um, Idris Bauer, um, architect Idris Bauer, uh, just gave voice to a narrative that has been uh, put forward by the presidency in the recent days. It was the same narrative that uh, uh, Mr. Shehu um, Bello uh, made at uh, Kaduna, I mean Zaria Kaduna State, and it is funny that people will be talking about uh, local government autonomy. People be talking about uh, judicial autonomy. It, it, it's even 
you know, very offensive that this presidency should talk about uh, autonomy for judiciary, knowing their, their reckless disregard for, for the rule of law. But, but that's not the matter. The, 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 the presidency and um, the likes of uh, Idris should understand that the issues we are discussing about is not local government autonomy. In the first place, local government should have no place in the constitution of Nigeria. There is no federation in the world, a true federation where local government system is part of the constitution of the federal government. No, it is, local government is a business of the states and the local government, the 774 local government areas listed in the constitution is, is part of the restructuring we are talking about. It's a fraud to list those local government areas in the constitution, they should be expunged. Local government administration, creation, and financing is purely a business of the states. And the presidency has no right at all under the law in the, on the constitution of Nigeria to talk about local government area. Local government autonomy is a, is a, is a fraud to, to bring it up at this point. The restructuring we are talking about is that there are 70, 68 items in the exclusive list of the military imposed 1999 constitution. There is over concentration of power at the center. This constitution, this military imposed flawed constitution makes the president of Nigeria a god of Nigeria. He could wake up one morning, and if he likes your face, he could make you a billionaire. If he wakes up one morning, and he wants Zafara State to mine their goals, he could create a presidential fiat for Zafara State to mine their goals, refine it, and then make themselves multi-billionaires. That is the Nigeria we exist in, and that is what we are saying. Enough of that discriminative uh, presidency, empowered by the Constitution of Nigeria. It is not just about President Muhammad Buhari. Any other president with the kind of disposition that Mohamed Buhari has will behave in the same manner. And we are saying that enough of that kind of country. The system is against progress. This constitution is against unity, it's against cohesion. It creates disaffection. If Nigeria does not restructure the stark reality, and we say it with all sense of responsibility, responsibility that Nigeria will restructure itself. And the sooner the Nigerian government understands this fact, they should stop playing the ostrich. The, the realities are clear and it's obvious that things are not working. People are disaffected. Look at the, the, the presidency, the appointments in Nigeria. Look at the balance of power. Now, the, the National Assembly, they are, they are talking about it, who easily bring it up because they know that it is as lopsided as every other thing in Nigeria. It's, it's lopsided in their favor, so they could, they could bring it up at any time we talk about restructuring. And, and very soon, the people of southern Nigeria will occupy that National Assembly. And our people will say, if there is no restructuring, that National Assembly will not see. And I'm saying this on television with all sense of responsibility because we need to salvage Nigeria. We need to save Nigeria. Those who are calling for restructuring are patriotic Nigerians who want the progress and future of Nigeria to be secured. All right, then. thank you so much for your position. But let's uh, get into other issues that um, came up um, over the weekend, which uh, one of them was that of um, uh, the issue of a uh, directive on the, the grazing route, uh, which the president um, has asked uh, you know, the attorney general of the Federation, uh, uh, Malami, to, you know, to check on. You know, in as much as uh, a lot of uh, you know, reactions have traded that particular development, which most people are saying that uh, there were never any grazing routes. I just want to get the position of um, Macban on this particular matter of uh, open grazing system in Nigeria. Yeah, uh, one, one more. Uh, about the issue I'm talking on the, the grazing uh, areas and stockments. I think, just like what I brought to say, I believe those people calling for the structuring are talking about it so that at the end of the day, we are going to have a very peaceful and very progressive country that anybody can be proud of. And if that is the issue, then I don't see any reason why the pastoralists there are Nigeria. Over the years, right from the time of the colonial mass, the pastoralists have moved from the north down south during the dry season and move up north during the rainy season. Yes, I agree, time is changing. And uh, there's a lot of development now, and there is need to change this. But one thing people need to understand is that these are practices that cannot be changed overnight. I think if we will be prepared to ourselves, for example, 
in 1997, I wrote a protest thesis, which I named Nomadic Architect, a case study for setting the nomadic pillar in Australia. He used to tell you this over 20 years ago that I made that reason. And because I personally felt that this movement is not the best option, and I know time will come when this thing will come to an end. But it's not something that just some few people will come and say we have banned open grades. If you have banned open grades, what do you expect the pastoralists as Nigerians, the moving with their country, what do they do with their country? And, and also, let us also have in mind that these cows, they are moving around. Part of the natural market, we use these cows, we use the hands and skin before the time of the pandemic. One of the major uh, revenue for government at that time. And I don't think it's proper for us now because we have reached a certain level of development. To now forget all what the pastoral have contributed in this country and to say we don't want to stop it today at its end. What we are saying at Pakba, yes, we said grazing stuff, yes, ranching. What is ranching? Ranching are areas are the number of grazing areas put together in a large in a large area. And that large area is a great area because you cannot take a ranch and put it in at the center of Lagos or Abuja. So you have to take the ranch and put it somewhere in the bush. And if I have 20 ranches in that area, then please qualify the area to be a grazing reserve. And if I understand the son of the president, what they are saying is that if you have a grazing reserve in Bauti State, for example, we have another one in Oyo uh, or Ul or Itoku State, that we should be able to link between grazing area A and grazing area B. While government. All right, architect, making architect Bawa. Architect Bawa, you seem to be alluding to grazing. All right, Architect Bawa, if I have to bust in right now, Architect Bawa, you seem to be referring to grazing road. You talked about grazing area A, B, and that. But in recent, uh, in the, in, if you go back to the nation's history, these grazing routes never existed. Are you saying right now, just because uh, there is a... Uh, you know, modernity and um, Nigerians have actually moved, you know, you know to, uh, to civil uh, ways of living, that these pastoralists should be allowed to just, uh, you know, graze freely to people's farms, even when there have been records and, of course, uh, reports of people uh, being attacked in their own lands and, of course, in their own farms. I, I want to authoritatively tell you, Hello? Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you. I, I want to so let me tell you that the grazing routes have existed in this country. And grazing routes? Of this country. Mm. Because myself as a pastoralist, it may interest me to note that I have taken my cattle from one part of the country to another. Yes, I realized that it was not any benefit to me. And I settled down. And I decided to go into other things. Now I, I'm practicing ranching. I practice ranching right now. But what I'm saying, I started practicing ranching about 20, exactly 2001. And I want to assure you, this is 30 years now. I have not reached 50% of the ranch. Now you are telling the pastoralists to stop today and start ranching. How will they do that? And government is not uh, intervening in that area. Because last time when the federal government started the issue of intervening in the Ruga award, oh, oh, oh. so many people criticized that. Now, right. are we saying that the children of this normal, the pastoralists, they should be abandoned, they should be forgotten, they should just be set aside? Because All right, uh, not any Bauer. development goes to these innocent children. All right, Remember, Architect Bauer, they you don't said... have any primary. No, all right, because... we've, we've gotten, we've gotten your, your position right now concerning um, alternatives and all of that. But then you said something. I just want us to uh, you know, stay on that for a bit. You said that before now that, that they have been uh, grazing routes in Nigeria. Specifically, who established these grazing routes that you talked about? Go, go to the history book. we we'll see we have grazing routes. These grazing routes, started before independence during the colonial time. And in fact, 
most of the gazing uh, reserves that we have in this country, we have quite a number of them that have even been gazetted. And I know a few years back, there were a time when even federal government intervened in trying to rehabilitate some of the grazing areas and stop wood. All what we are saying, whether this thing exists, whether people believe or they know this is or not, but for peace to reign, for us to move forward, for us to carry these pastoral as long as our own, they are also Nigerian, for us to make them to have sense of belonging, to be able to carry them along. How do we carry them along? We carry them along to also support them. Now, in this, who is enjoying this issue of insecurity? Nobody All right. is enjoying this. Because even the full army pastoral are not All right, tired. thank you. Uh, um, in the bushes, they kidnap them, they mm. uh, uh, rust them, they are cutting. And you see, no any from government at the level at the level or local government level. All right, thank you, Agitate Bob. People look at them and see they are just at home. All right, My uh, worry is that if you continue this way, mm. these pastoralists continue to multiply, they have their consent, and we deny them education. I assure that in time to come, they are going to constitute a bigger problem. Me and you are everyone. And in order to set that kind of happening, that of a uh, population, let us look for alternatives. See them as ours. Provide some social amenities. All and right, I thank you so you, much. If we provide these amenities to them, mm. over seventy percent of these pastoralists on their own they will take. All right, thanks for, thanks for your position. You uh, we appreciate it, uh, um, Architect Bauer. We need to get uh, Mr. Ken Robinson's position on that. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Now, you have heard uh, the position of Magban on this issue of uh, recovering uh, uh, grazing route, and he says uh, before now there has been grazing route. I, I really want to know how you react concerning that and uh, uh, maybe the way forward in all of this uh, dilemma as it is. Um. Justin, I will I will ignore the overlook the comment on claim on grazing rules because um, those who should know governors and some other authorities in law have, have said that they don't exist. So let's overlook it. But but uh, Idris has made some comments that I think are understandable. Uh, no one is thinking of uh, there is none of us uh, the governors and all those in the southern Nigeria. There is no illusion about the fact that people cannot transform from uh, open grazing to ranching in, in a week. That's understandable. The, the offensive part and what has brought up on all these talks is about the, the arrogance and the disrespect, disrespectful, disrespectful manner in which Meiti uh, Allah and some other elements in northern Nigeria uh, make, uh, make statements concerning these issues. When they use the words must, you must do this. Uh, no, they, nobody's under anybody. We are not uh, slaves of any other person. We, we are equal Nigerians. We have contributed more to the development and growth of this country than any other region in the, in the, in the country. So when, when they make those uh, arrogant statements, it, it becomes offensive and people uh, tend to react. The ban on open grazing is, is a settled matter. Now, they can appeal to governors and traditional uh, institutions and leaders of Southern Nigeria. In a country where there is understanding, where there is mutual respect, where there is some, some level of accord, these issues could have been easily handled. We, 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 the government is talking about building Ruga and building settlements for, for, for S men. Are you going to also build uh, settlements for fa farmers and settlements for fishermen, modern settlements with schools, health centers? Are you also going to do that? What is good for the Ghana is also good for the goods. If you're doing it for others, you should do it for farmers and you should do it for fishermen. The government should be inclusive. And, and then the ban is in place. Then you can now approach authorities for conversation and discussions mutual with mutual respect. Not when you stay in one, one, one obscure place and then you go on camera and then you make statements as if you, people are under you and use words like must and distressful words, and, and then you come to think that uh, this is a country, it's a, we are in a democracy. The people have rights, and you must respect our rights, but we appreciate the fact that he has made, and I think that they should now speak to our people in a respectful manner, make very sincere appeals, and there, there could be understanding. But that understanding must right. be based on also understanding from them that there are issues that cannot continue. You cannot continue to every month 
share 57% of oil resources when you contribute nothing. And then the Niger Delta, the South South, that contributes about 87%, gets 20%. That's the restructuring we're talking about. In that right. kind of situation, we are not ready to discuss with you until you, you, you come to terms with us. Right, when it was so granite and cocoa, they were taking about 50%. Derivation was about 50%. And then the, the, the national, the center shared about uh, 30%, and then 20% was distributed to, to the other states. Now it is the other way around, and 13% is given to us. That's, that's your denying us 87%. Well, thank you, Mr. Robinson. So we must have sincere conversations, and then people can consider the, the appeals that will, sincere appeals that will come from, from, from them. Because we know that uh, people cannot transform immediately from, from open grazing to ranching in a week or in a month. All it's right. a process. All right, thank you. Indeed, uh, it might uh, or it will take some time before we can actually transit from open grazing to ranching. Uh, we have been looking at the issue of uh, restructuring and, of course, uh, the issue of um, open grazing and the claims to, you know, you know reclaiming uh, open uh, gra uh, grazing routes in Nigeria. And uh, we have had uh, Ken uh, Robinson, uh, National Publicity Secretary of um, Pandev, and, of course, uh, architect Idris Bawa, Assistant National Secretary General of the Mieta Alakato Breeders Association of Nigeria, MACBAN. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we'll discuss how amending certain media laws can affect journalism. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us.